Hey dudes, dude the Builder here. In this episode of Zig Master, we're going to be taking a look at arrays in Zig. Uh, but first, I want to uh, mention something that I forgot to mention in uh, the previous videos. Is that uh, a very, very important learning resource when you're trying to learn Zig is what's known as the language reference. Uh, when you go here to ziglang.org uh, under this learn link, you're going to find here that it says uh, documentation language reference. Okay. Um, there's also down here the guide for the Zig build system, which um, we will be discussing further in this series. But the language reference um, is really important because in one place, this is basically just one uh, long HTML page. Uh, you have basically the, the, the essence of the Zig language, the syntax, and uh, the really uh, important concepts that you have to master when you're learning this language. So uh, it's a really, really important resource. I recommend you take the time to read it. It doesn't take uh, too, too long to, to cover all of this. It's all in one page, and it looks like a whole lot of material, but it, actually it isn't uh, that much compared to other languages. So uh, it is a really important learning resource and I recommend it. Um, let's go uh, back to the terminal and um, let's start talking about arrays. But first, I want to give a big thank you to all those who have uh, made a donation to the channel. Um, here uh, we have uh, uh, Jordan Frisch and uh, Damir Van Dyke and Bjorn. Toft uh, Madsen, also Hakeem uh, Orwo, and Marcel Ox. So to all of you, uh, thank you very much. It means a lot and it ha really helps out to keep on making content like this. And if anybody, anybody else wants to pitch in and make a, a donation, there's a link in the description of the video. So to all of you, a big thank you. Now let's talk about arrays in Zig. An array is basically a sequence um, or a series of values in memory. Um, it's it's in, in Zig. Uh, you can define an array in several ways. We're going to be taking a look at those uh, right now. First of all, we have the actual array literal style uh, that we have here in this line. We're basically here uh, using the square brackets. Uh, normally in in the within the square brackets you're going to have the length of the array the length is part of the type of the array uh, that's why arrays are known as fixed length uh, types um, you can't gr you cannot grow an array or shrink it and the uh, length has to be known at compile time here uh, in this uh, array literal syntax we're using here the underscore to basically uh, tell the compiler to infer the length since we're spelling out here with the literal syntax the actual elements of the array. So it's easy to know how many elements we have here. We have exactly three elements. So this is going to be an array of three U8s. Um, you could explicitly specify here the, the length. But the uh, common idiomatic way that you're going to see in pretty much uh, most of Zig code is using this underscore here to infer the length. Now, we also have what's known as the, the tuple literal style. Here, we are specifying, when uh, defining the constant here array, uh, we're specifying explicitly that this is going to be an array of three U8s. And then, uh, on the left-hand side, we are using what's known as a tuple literal. Um, basically, uh, we have here the dot and the curly braces and the list of elements, one, two, three. This would normally, this is what, what this uh, produces is, is known as a tuple type. But since we are assigning here uh, the destination or the result location, which is uh, another part of, important part of Zik, is that it has res what's known as result location semantics, which basically means that you can have expressions without a type, and uh, the type that's going to be finally assigned to that expression is the type of the result location. 
in this case, a result location is this uh, array that we're defining here, and we're explicitly saying that the type is an array of three bytes. So this literal uh, normally would be a tuple, but it will then be coerced to an array of three bytes. That's the second syntax that we're going to take a look at. Next up, we have uh, the option that, once again, here we are defining it uh, with the type explicitly uh, spelled out here, a three uh, array of three bytes. But this time we're using the undefined keyword. And uh, you'll see this often when, when we're creating arrays to be used as buffers. Uh, you, you, you can initially um, assign it the value here undefined. And uh, as I mentioned in a previous video, undefined allows you precisely to define a variable um, in the circumstance that you, at the moment you don't have a value for it, but you will be assigning value, you will be initializing uh, that area of memory uh, before using it. And because uh, we are defining here this array as undefined, we have to define it as a var because it would be kind of useless <laughs> to define it as a const and then you can't modify it and, and it'll remain undefined forever. So usually when you see this defined as uh, assigning the value at undefined, you're going to see that it's a var so we can modify it and initialize it. And here we are initializing it, uh, basically using the, the indexing syntax with the square brackets. Um, as usual, in most languages, we start indexing at zero. And here we're assigning to uh, element zero, the value one, here uh, index one, index two. And here we are making use of that, the uh, new destructuring syntax. Uh, that just arrived in the latest SIG version. Uh, we're basically uh, listing out here on the right, on the left hand side, all of the uh, slots you could say inside of that array, all, all of those spaces for the different bytes uh, from zero to two in, in terms of indexing. And we are assigning once again, we have this uh, tuple literal here that has three, uh, three fields. And, and each of those will be uh, uh, assigned to the corresponding um, uh, left-hand side value here on the left-hand side of the equal sign. Uh, and here we see that we can print out an array using the any format specifier. An array, as I said, uh, the length is part of the type and you can uh, access that uh, length with the len field. We're printing it out here. And um, since we are starting indexing at zero, you can't access any index that's uh, equal to or greater than that length of the array, okay? So if I uncomment this line, we would get uh, an index out of bounds error. Um, what we'll see here next is, uh, it says the other way around, this is how we can do the, use the destructuring syntax, this time the array is on the right hand side. And we can define here, we're basically declaring three constants, A, B, and C. And we are assigning uh, to uh, those constants uh, the array, which will then be destructured and uh, the, the elements will be assigned to the corresponding uh, constants here. And we print them out. Now we have an example of how to make a multi-dimensional array, which is basically an array of arrays and um, here, using the, the, that tuple literal syntax, uh, combined with uh, the, the outer um, array literal syntax here, using the underscore to infer the size. And uh, here, we have a demonstration of how to access um, one of those elements in a multidimensional array. We are basically just using uh, indexing and sub-indexing. Um, next up, we're going to see uh, what's known as a sentinel terminated, terminated array. These are basically uh, not seen very often. When you, when you do see these, they're, they're pretty much uh, used when, when you have to interoperate with C, because C makes use of uh, a sentinel terminated array, uh, specifically when you're dealing with strings in C, uh, what's known as null terminated strings. 
That's basically a sentinel, a sentinel terminated array. But Zig uh, takes that to a more generalized level. You can have any type of sentinel as long as the sentinel is the same type as the, the element type of the array. As we can see here, we have this zero. The zero is a, a literal, so it'll initially start out as a comp time int, but a comp time int can be coerced to a U8. So uh, that's why we can use it here. And as you can see in the array, we have zeros um, within the, the, the elements of this array. But uh, what it means to be a sentinel terminated array is that in the, the index that would be equivalent to the length of the array, you have a zero uh, in this case, which is the sentinel in this specific case. So um, here we're demonstrating that by printing out um, the, the actual sentinel, which would be at the index equal to the length. And as I mentioned before, in a normal array, you can't access that index that would be out of bounds. But in a sentinel terminated array, the compiler will make sure that uh, that, that element at the, the index equal to the length is going to be the actual sentinel, in this case, the value zero. Okay. And uh, as I said, this is used uh, uh, mostly when you're interoperating with C, because in C you have, uh, in many cases, a string, which is just a, a sequence of bytes, and they are terminated with a, a zero, a zero byte, which would be the null uh, character. And that's what's known as a null terminated string in C. Um, in, in, in Zig, the, the string literal is actually a pointer to a sentinel terminated array of bytes, and the sentinel is zero. So that makes uh, uh, Zig string literals uh, easy to use when interoperating with C, which, because they're basically uh, also qualify as null terminated strings. And um, you can also uh, coerce them um, to a normal zig string, which would be a slice of const u8, um, which is this syntax that we have here. We'll be talking about slices further on in the series. But here we are creating a new constant called bytes. We're saying that the type is a slice of const u8, and we are assigning it that stir, that which is our uh, product produced by this string literal. And stir is going to be, as we're going to see as from the result of this um, type of built-in, which tells you the type of, 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 a, of a value or a variable. Uh, we're going to see that this is a pointer to a sentinel terminated array. And we can assign that to uh, a result location, which is of type slice of constuate, which is a normal zig string. And uh, it will be coerced without any problems. Okay. And um, finally, we have here the fact that an array is a copy by value, uh, has copy by value semantics. Um, it's not a reference. It's, it's, like, it's treated like a primitive value, like if you were copying an integer or a float. So uh, here we are making a copy. We, uh, we have this uh, new uh, copy of the array called copy. Um, we're declaring it as a variable, as a variable because we're going to be modifying it here. We copy. Uh, the, the index uh, 2, which would be the third element, we're assigning the value 42. And then we're going to print out both of them, the original array and the copy, so we can see that that uh, mutation that we did on the copy does not affect the original array. Okay, so let's open here a little terminal pane and let's do a zig build run. And as you can see, um, in that last example, uh, here we go, the, the, the copy has that value 42 here, and the original still has 3. And here we have uh, our bytes, which are of type slice of const u8, and the original stir, which, which uh, was produced from a string literal, is a pointer, a const pointer, constant pointer, to a sentinel terminated array of 5 elements of bytes, uh, 5 bytes. And uh, up here, we have when we printed out the actual Sentinel. Um, here, we have the example of using the multidimensional array uh, with the index, indexing and sub-indexing. Here, we have those variables that we obtained by destructuring. And here, we have uh, printing out the array len from the len field, length from the len field. 
and uh, here the example of using any to print out the array okay so all of that uh, worked successfully and that's pretty much what I wanted to cover for arrays. Uh, we're going to be talking about arrays further along when we talk about uh, other aspects such as slices and memory management. Uh, but I wanted to briefly just cover the fundamentals of arrays in SIG. So I f hope you find this useful. Do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.